meus amigos acompanham o canal O Amigo do Noivo. Eu estou fazendo esse vídeo porque eu estava assistindo algo na, no YouTube e eu vi um vídeo muito interessante. Nós vemos que tem igrejas de hoje que querem trazer é, é, as coisas do Antigo Testamento dos judeus né, para é, é, o cristianismo. Querido, deixa eu te dizer uma coisa. Os judeus lá em Israel, eles nem acreditam que Jesus é o Messias. Sim, o Jesus, o Cristo, que me salvou e te salvou, que por meio dele nós, nós temos acesso a Deus, eles nem acreditam. E eu vou provar no vídeo que vai vir a seguir a esse vídeo. Né? Nesse vídeo, eu vou botar uma continuação de uma pesquisa que um homem fez em Israel, perguntando sobre Jesus para o povo de Israel. Como naquela época eles rejeitaram Jesus, eles continuam rejeitando Jesus ainda hoje. E como é que pode as igrejas de hoje, determinadas denominações, determinadas igrejas, ficar trazendo costumes hebraicos, costumes judaicos, costumes da época da lei, para dentro da igreja de Cristo. Querido, nós estamos vivendo uma nova aliança. Uma nova aliança que foi feita com a morte de Jesus Cristo. Então, assim, eles não acreditam em Jesus. E as igrejas ficam trazendo menorá, ficam trazendo arca da aliança, ficam usando kipá, ficam usando tali, é, talit, eu acho. Nem sei o nome daquilo que se bota no ombro. Eu nem sei o nome, porque eu nem quero me aprofundar em nada do judaísmo. Tá? Põe uma coisa na cabeça de vocês. O cristianismo se derivou do judaísmo, sim. Porque Cristo era judeu, mas os judeus não acreditam que Jesus era o Messias. E eu vou provar isso para vocês com o vídeo que vai vir a seguir. Logo após eu terminar de falar, vai começar um vídeo que é uma pesquisa de um homem que pergunta quem é Jesus, isso para os israelitas, como naquela vez eles mataram Jesus, se Jesus voltassem hoje, eles também rejeitariam Jesus da mesma forma, porque eles, eles fazem pouco, vocês vão assistir e tirem a sua conclusão, então por que, que é que as igrejas de hoje, determinadas igrejas de doutrinas apostólicas, coisa que eu acho bacana, não acho errado, mas por que, que as igrejas ficam trazendo costumes que eram dos judeus? Por que se o novo, o novo, a nova aliança pôs um fim, na antiga aliança, nós somos fruto da nova aliança, nós somos a igreja de Cristo. Lá em Atos dos Apóstolos, eles queriam circuncidar os gentios e Paulo não deixou. Paulo não deixou, tá? Circuncisão ninguém quer, né? Agora as coisas simples eles querem pegar. Quanto mais é, é, coisas para se é, obter lucro, como o, o, as primícias. Diz-me, eu até concordo. Porque a obra de Deus ela tem que ser mantida. Diz, irmão, eu concordo. Mas tem coisa que está demais. Estão querendo implementar, é, é, botar judaísmo. Gente vestida de roupa de saco na igreja. O que, que é isso, gente? O que, que é isso? Olha o que, é que a Bíblia vai dizer lá em Hebreus 8, 13. Chamando nova essa aliança, ele tornou antiquada a primeira e o que se torna antiquado e envelhecido está a ponto de desaparecer. Não é eu que digo, foi o escritor aos hebreus. Hebreus 8, versículo 13. Então, isso é feio. Isso é errado. Os judeus não acreditam em Jesus. E eu vou provar para vocês. Agora, assiste
Hi, Joel. How you doing? How are you, Rabbi Lux? Welcome to Yushalayim. Well, we appreciate it, Rabbi Lux. Hi. Call me Gutman if you like. How can I help you? Uh, well, we're looking for a, um, an honest response to uh, the teachings of Jesus. And That's good. Okay. Let me, let me explain to you. An honest response. A little story to explain it. Once upon a time, there was a king. The most special, beloved king you could ever imagine. Now, this king had many, many, many children. But for some reason, one of his children became the most famous. And much of the population called him the prince. One day, the king and the prince came to a village. And the whole village got so excited, and they went out and they welcomed the prince. Well, how do you think the king felt? The man you call Yashka, this guy, he said, here's how you pray. Our father, you guys are focusing on a man and you're forgetting God, the Father. Well, well let me ask you this. I mean, uh, Jesus said of himself, he said, before Abraham was born, I am. Why, why did people pick up stones to stone him when he said that? It says in the Torah, you should know this day and take it to your heart. The Lord is God in the heaven above and on the earth below. There's nothing else. There's nothing besides God. God is the I am. Over in Hinduism, they say that man is God. That's idolatry. God is all. So it's idolatry for a man to claim to be God. It's, it, God is all. If he says that it's all God, including me, that's not idolatry. God is unlimited. God is infinite. That man is not infinite. He's limited. You believe that Jesus kept the Sabbath? He said he didn't, according to that book. Okay, and Moses said, excuse me, okay. Moses, in Moses' time, a man broke the Sabbath by gathering sticks. Uh -huh. And they asked of God what they should do. In those days, a person would be killed for doing such a thing. Now, in that book that you have, he went and he picked plants on Sabbath, and he said, man is greater than Sabbath. Sabbath's here for man. Or so he, he claimed that he was the Lord of the Sabbath. Uh-huh. Okay, so now we have the Bible that says, don't pick plants on Shabbos, on Shabbat. And we have this man come along and say, it's okay. Now, am I going to accept him? Look what happened. We don't have to go by faith anymore. Every single Jew who followed that religion, that belief, his grandchildren are Luke and John. They're not Jews anymore. Your belief spells, God forbid, the destruction of my people. Uh, that I don't want. So another thing that Jesus did is they brought him a man and they laid him before him. He was crippled. And he said to the man, your sins are forgiven and that was called blasphemy. Why? Well, because a man can't forgive another man's sins. God has to forgive the person's sins. Okay. And so I could say your sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. What's the proof of that? And that teaching, bottom line, I mean, at its core, you know, uh, before Abraham was, I am forgiving sin, greater than the temple, uh, you know, uh, I and the Father are one. What he's doing is he's claiming to be God, correct? I lived in India for two years. And over there, they say, when you become God, realize you say, I am God, I am. Uh -huh. They say, I've seen it over there. Talk about thousands and thousands of people. He's not the only one that came up to that conclusion. Sure. And what we come up to say, we don't come up and say, I am God. When we understand the truth, we say, God is all, including me. Right. Big difference. Okay. This argument's been going on for 2,000 years. I don't think I'm going to change your mind and understand. You're a pastor in the church. You have your book and your way of understanding. You're going to keep on saying it says what you want to say. What I would like you to learn, you're a decent human being. Go to the Father. Go to the King. You're always focusing on, I read that you say, you're here only to serve Yashka. You're here only to serve Him. Serve the Father. Serve the King. He's the one. He's the creator of all. I believe that His teachings were true, that He is God who became man and took on a body for the purpose of sacrifice, to be sacrificed as, as a Passover lamb for the forgiveness of my sin. The Torah tells us clearly, no man will die for another man's sins. The father won't die for the son's sins and the sons won't die for the father's sin. The Bible tells us this. Now you come along and say, this man died for somebody else's sins. The Torah, that contradicts the Torah. The other thing that he said of the, of, of the scripture, of the Torah, is he said that, that in it, 
um, people search for eternal life, but he his claim was that the Torah and Scripture were about him personally, yeah. and that and okay. that in him is eternal life. Okay, let me give you. Okay, we're going to do what I told you. We'd never solve the problem by going this way, but right, let me right. give you an example. Okay, we have the prophet Malachi. You call him Mal Malachi. Malachi. Uh -huh. He's a trustworthy prophet, and he said like this: Eliyahu was going to come to usher in the age of the Messiah. And he's going to bring peace between the father and the son, the children and the father. In your book, Yashka says, I didn't come to bring peace between the father and son. I came to bring war. Mm -hmm. Now you're asking me to believe him over the prophet. The prophet said, I come to bring peace in the family. And he specifically said, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring war. Now, how can I believe such a man? Who am I going to do? Throw away the whole Torah, the whole Bible, our whole life? Well, well, what is your take on the Messiah? I mean, are you expecting a Messiah from studying your scriptures? From any minute, any minute. Please, so, God, right now. And so, when he comes, the temple will come and there'll be peace in the world. <clears throat> but we don't have the temple. We don't have peace, so we know he hasn't come. And is that a thing with Jesus? Is that he didn't, uh, he didn't free... Uh, he didn't free Israel from the Roman Empire? That, that's a small problem. He didn't bring peace to the world. Okay. He, didn't bring, he didn't bring the temple. What if Look, he still will? What if he'll return? Okay, you know what? I'll tell you what. I'll prove I'm the Messiah for you right now. Okay. I'll do any miracle you want. Just tell me what you want right now on the spot. Okay. Uh, tell me. Pick one. Pick a good one. Uh, let's see. R the, the temple's destroyed. Raise it in three days. Okay. I'll do it next time when I come back, okay? <laughs> uh, all right? Yeah. What I'm waiting for is called the revelation of God's presence. This is what we're here for, to see God himself now. Please God the temple will come. Please God the Messiah. Please God all these things. I want peace in the world. Mm -hmm. But I'm only going to be here for a little while longer. I'm going to leave this world. Mm -hmm. I want to see God. I want to see God's presence. Serve the Father. Serve the King. Okay. Have a good Pleasure. life, Joel. Yeah.